Spring is nearly here. It's still a little chilly where we are, but I'm definitely starting to think about purchasing more chicks for our homestead. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the steps that I think are really important as you decide to add more chicks or your first set of chicks to your homestead. So we're gonna talk about six tips in order to get started with chicks, purchasing your chicks and where to actually get them from. And the first thing to think about is what type of chickens you actually want. You really want to narrow down on what breeds you want to get, and the breed's gonna play a big role on the temperament of the chicken, if they're definitely a friendly lap chicken, or if they're a more flighty chicken, a broody chicken. Definitely, you're gonna to want to think about that. Another thing to think about is egg production and egg color. There's some chickens that are amazing layers, something like the leghorn, which is actually gonna lay a white egg, and they are really renowned for their egg laying capabilities. They're actually America's choice in egg layers, so when you go to the grocery store, you get those white eggs, they're usually from leghorns. Now, there's also so many other colors of eggs. You have brown eggs, blue eggs, green, pink, cream, and honestly, there's probably even more than that because there's literally new colors that come out all the time, and it's gonna add a nice variety to your egg cartons, your egg baskets, and if you're doing egg sales, I definitely think having different colors helps get more customers, and get people really excited to purchase your eggs. Another aspect to think about is your hardiness of your chicken. We live in an area that does get all four seasons, which means that we need a chicken that can withstand the colder temperatures in the winter, as well as the warmer temperatures in the summer. So choosing chickens that were actually raised and bred in this area is gonna be really helpful for us, and that really helps on deciding on the chickens that we have on our flock. Now, if you're in a warmer, area that is usually a lot hotter or drier, you definitely wanna think about different breeds that are gonna really thrive in those areas. And lastly, another thing to think about is the actual size and look of your chicken. Some people really want to have a wide variety of chicks and colors in their coop, so being able to pick on the exterior look of your chicken or the size, there are a lot smaller types of chickens, like a silky is usually gonna be a lot smaller. You have a bantam chicken, which is a lot smaller, or you can get pretty large sized chickens, which we have some pretty good sized ones out there. Another thing to think about is what type of purpose is this chicken going to prove? Do you want a rooster that's gonna be protecting the flock and being able to fertilize your flock? Or do you want all females? Do you want them to be primarily for egg production? primarily for meat production, because then you might want a Cornish cross, or do you want a bird that's going to have a dual purpose, which means that they're gonna be able to lay a good amount of eggs, but they could also be a good source of meat if times were tough and you did need to get some meat out of your chickens. The next step, once you've actually narrowed down what type of chickens you want, is to figure out where you're going to buy them. There are so many different hatcheries that have really great reviews and really great chickens from them. We end up buying a lot of our chickens from Tractor Supply, which uses Hoover's Hatchery, and we either will get them mailed to us, and yes, there are little baby chicks that come in the mail. They're only a couple days old, and you'll pick them up at your post office. You can also go in person and pick up your own chicks. There's usually Tractor Supplies that has them, as well as local feed stores will have them. I've also found that if you are on any Facebook groups or local homesteading groups that you can often buy them online or kind of figure out an online community where you can purchase them in person. What's really important to us is making sure that our chickens do have some of their vaccines and medications when they are young so that they're still coming into our flock really healthy from the very beginning. So if that's important to you, I definitely suggest looking into that. And there are so many hatcheries again, so definitely do some research on the different hatcheries, the sources that you're getting them from, and if there's any other feedback on the page or reviews, I definitely suggest reading into them. Another important important part of this is actually going to be picking out the dates and times that you want your chicks. I suggest giving yourself a buffer of time. Usually if you get them mailed, you'll be able to pick an actual date when you get them mailed. And 
what I really suggest doing because we've done this in the past, it is so much harder on us, it was really hard on us to actually raise them in the cold, cold winter. So I really think moving forward, we would only get chicks after the last few days of frost in our area when it starts to warm up. So sometime after Mother's Day or Easter, March, April is probably when we would actually start to grow our flock. It's honestly just a lot easier to go outside, feed, water, and care for these chicks. Whereas we actually ended up having to raise a lot of the chicks inside of our living room at the beginning because it was just dropping down to really cold, harsh temperatures and we couldn't keep them warm enough in our barn, which wasn't fully insulated. So something really important to think about as you start to plan is figuring out what you're gonna do with them once you have them and planning out a time that you're actually gonna be ready and have everything ready for them. Once you've actually picked out the timing of when you're going to get your chicks, how many you're going to get, then you need to get to work. You need to actually start to set up your brooder. And we're actually doing a really fun challenge contest with a few different really exciting brands for the month of February and March. I'm going to include all of the details down below, but all you have to do is tag all of the brands listed right here and make sure to post a picture of your brooder setup. This setup is going to enter you into a contest to win some amazing prizes. You're going to be able to get your own chick starter foods from Nature Serve. You're going to get a really great sweater and hat from Hoover's Hatchery, and you're gonna get a chick starter package from Strong Animals. So definitely make sure to take a picture of the brooder setup that you have. Once you have the actual date and how many chicks you want to purchase, you've made the purchase, then you have the time that you need to actually set up the space for your chickens. We did a video the other day on how to actually set up a brooder, and I'll link it down below. But a brooder is gonna be vital in order to create the environment that your baby chicks need because they don't have their mom hen caring for them. So you need to build that space that's going to be warm, it's going to have food, water, and it's going to be a safe area that they're going to be contained, they're going to be guarded from predators, as well as any of your big chicks because there will be a pecking order and you need to make sure that they are of full size. And you also need to make sure that you're keeping them dry. Chicks at this time can get wet and it can cause them to get hypothermia and they honestly need to be kept really, really warm and snug because they don't have the nest of their mom to keep them warm. You are now their mom, so you must step up to the plate and help them. It's finally the day. Your chicks are here. They've arrived in the mail or you've actually gone and picked them up at a local feed store and you finally have the little chickies. Not only is this a super fun and amazing day, I definitely suggest taking pictures because they grow really fast and it's pretty crazy, but it also means that you can start to be their mama hen. So definitely you're going to put them into their brooder at this point in time and you really want to make sure that you're providing a really warm, secure place for all of your baby chicks. You're also giving them a really good source of clean water that is keeping the bedding dry at all times, whether that means removing and re-putting in bedding if it does get wet, but providing a clean space for all your little chickens. And you also want to make sure that you're giving them a good, nutritious chick food. When chicks are small, they need a high protein feed, and there are so many different brands. We use Nature Serve, which is actually one of the prizes in our contest, and they are an awesome brand of chick feed to get started with. You want to make sure that you're also giving your chicks a crumble because their mouths are really, really tiny, and they're going to need a smaller food or else they won't be able to eat something like a pellet. Step six and the final step to getting your chicks is helping them grow, making sure that there are no illnesses and letting them start to get into any of your other flocks as well as just be grow up in your homestead. It's gonna take them a couple weeks to start laying eggs, so you have some time to get to know your chickens. If you do want them to be really friendly chickens, I definitely suggest picking them up, holding them, and making sure that you're around them pretty often. Chickens can actually identify 
hundreds of different faces so they'll be able to memorize your face and know exactly who you are. Something that my husband did when we got our chicks was feeding them little chicken treats. This really helped with making them more friendly, especially breeds that aren't always going to be your lab chicken, want to hang out with you and it's been really fun to watch our chickens grow. They love people and they're such a delight to have so I wish you the best of luck.